move on to discuss uh, Anthony Richardson. He has returned as the starting quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts. He was benched um, two weeks ago in favor of Joe Flacco. Uh, in favor of Joe Flacco after the, uh, a disappointing performance against the uh, against the Houston Texans and that controversial play where he infamous of it, I'm not even going to try to say that word that I was trying to say where he um, tried to tap out or he did tap out for a play and there's a lot of speculation that that had something to do with him being benched now obviously the Indianapolis Colts vehemently and uh, specifically uh, Shane Steichen vehemently uh, denied that notion but to be honest the only people that will ever truly know is them and but that ended up uh, but that series of events ended up linked his benching and uh, up came Joe Flacco uh, and Joe Flacco came in after leading the Indianapolis Colts to uh, uh, to uh, a couple victories earlier earlier this season and against some good teams as well uh, or against one good team in this in the Steelers and he also had a really good game against the um, Titans as well where they were able to get another victory um, Shane Steichen he decided to make a switch after going four and four uh, and it was a it was a move at that time that I thought could do the Indianapolis Colts some good because if you looked at it up to that point up to that point they were four and four they lost they all four games that they lost number one was with Anthony Richardson um, as the quarterback at that point right and every single game that they lost was a one possession game. So they're four and four, but every game that they're losing is a one possession game. So there's a there's some room for improvement there. And then you want to analyze Anthony Richardson's performances. They've been garbage. They have been garbage. He has a um, you look at the statistics he has this season. He is compl- his completion percentage is forty four percent. That is one of the worst in the history in the NFL for how many passes he's thrown up to that point. I don't have the extent stat, but that is a historically terrible stat- statistic right there. 44.4 passer rating. He uh, He's thrown for 958 yards in those eight games. He has four touchdowns, seven interceptions, 57.2. To say he was struggling is was a massive understatement. And despite his performances in those games, despite him having 50% completion at the Packers, 50% completion versus the Bears, 31% uh, completion at Houston, um, 41% completion percentage against the Dolphins. Despite those lackluster um despite those lackluster performances and poor quarterback play they're in all of those games they're losing to the bears they're only um not bears they're only losing to the packers by six points they're only losing to the texans in two games by a combined five points in two games one game they lost by two the other game they lost by three they're only losing to the um to the in the Miami Dolphins by uh no not Miami Dolphins what was the other game that they lost under uh under him so they lost to the Packers they lost to the Texans twice and then they lost to actually no 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 they lost three games with Anthony Richardson the other game that they lost was with Joe Flacco where they the Colts defense unexplainably conceded thirty seven points to the Jaguars oh. Anthony Richardson did get one win. The one win that he got, he only made 16 points and he beat Tyler Huntley in Miami Dolphins, so scored 10. But, but yeah, they've been 1-3. and And you're thinking about it, this is an Indianapolis team was talent and they were a drop away from making the playoffs last season. So to expect them to make the playoffs again this season is not that a high is not that a high of expectation. And you're looking at it, you're Shane Steik and you're 4-4. Four four. Why don't we bring Joe Flacco back into the mix because he just gives us a better chance to win now. Well, you put him in there and, you know, you lose two straight games against the Vikings and the Bills. Against the Vikings, um, he doesn't play terribly. You know, 180 yards, one interception, 16 of 27. 
Um, they only managed to score 13 points. Can't really get the ball moving against the Brian Flores defense that's been absolutely elite this season. And then they lose to the Buffalo Bills in which he you know, goes 26 for 25 and has 272 yards and two touchdowns, but he throws three interceptions. And that's the thing with Joe Flacco. Even last season when he was coming in for the Browns, he did throw a lot of interceptions. He will he will gamble. And uh, they ended up losing that game 30 to 20. And they were, to be honest, they were never really, you know, they were in it, but they were never in it, really in it. He never believed that they were going to be able to get that victory. And, um, and now... You know, the Colts being at four and six, which I still don't think is a horrible position to be in. I still think you have an, you still have a, you're not even, I wouldn't even say it's an outside shot. I still think you have a legitimate shot at that seventh seed. Um, yeah. But uh, but the Colts decide they're going to go back to Anthony Richardson. And look, I don't think that's, a, that's the worst decision in the world because Anthony Richardson, the one thing he does need is his reps. I believe he played 12 or 13 games in college, and he's only played 10 in the NFL. And uh, but uh, so he does need reps. And if you are in if you're in a position where you believe you know the season is practically over, of course you put him in there. Is the season over for Indianapolis? I wouldn't say so. But they do take on the Jets. But then after that, they do have the Lions, and then. And then it gets pretty easy from there, you know, with the Patriots, Broncos, Titans, Giants, Jaguars. That's manageable, you know. I I think the Colts have a legitimate have a legitimate six out of seven winnable games on their schedule, you know. Detroit is out of the you know you know out of the realm of possibility. But the other six games, I think they have a legitimate shot in there. So I was a little surprised that they you know because. In my opinion, moving away from Joe Flacco is almost conceding this season. Um, but what's you know what is you know ex- what is known is that Anthony Richardson does need reps. He does need reps. He needs that. Uh, he needs to prove whether or not he is that franchise quarterback or not. Indianapolis, they need to see it out of him because who knows? You know, they don't believe in him. They might be in that quarterback market again um, in this never-ending cycle of trying to replace. Andrew Luck, and um, and look, yeah, Richardson, he has the talent, he has the bright side, but he just doesn't have the poise in my position as a, in my in, in my opinion as an NFL quarterback. Sometimes I question his mechanics. He has a really really great arm, an extremely great arm. That throw that he made, opening, I believe it was Week One against the Texans, where he was, where he was, you know, slipping. Couldn't get a proper foot, and he just launches the ball 70, 80 yards, like, effortless, effort, effortlessly, effortlessly. It was incredible. It was incredible, and he makes those throws, you know. Then he goes where he just, he just you know, you put him in shotgun, and he's, and he's struggling to read a basic defense and go through the progressions like a, end of, like a, like a basic NFL quarterback would, and you know, it's you know there's a big high high ceiling, but there's an extremely low floor as well. And uh, you know there was a stat line actually. It was during that Texans game. I believe he was something like two of fifteen, but he had ninety eight yards and a touchdown. It really it really defined Anthony Richardson in one stat line and right there. Um, at that point in the game, obviously, he didn't finish that Texans game with that stat line. But there was a period in that Texans game where he was like 2 of 15, but he had 92 yards and a touchdown. It was a great representation of, you know, the inconsistent inconsistencies and the fact that Anthony Richardson does have extremely high ceiling but extremely low floor.